a shift focus over to Britain. King Charles's coronation is round the corner. On the face of it, Britain seems to be gearing up for the royal pomp and show. But a Reuters Ipsos poll tells a different story. The latest poll says that King Charles' approval rating has dipped since he took the throne, but nearly half of Britons still think he is doing a great job. According to the poll, the approval level is down from 61% last September after he succeeded his mother, Queen Elizabeth. A separate Ipsos survey also found 57% were satisfied with how Charles was doing his job, down 8 percentage points from when a similar poll was carried out in May last year. The poll comes at a time when there is a massive uproar against the expenditure involved in the coronation. This as the UK continues to battle a cost of living crisis, understandably over half of the respondents in another survey, 51% to be precise in a YouGov poll, said they do not believe the government in Britain should pay for the event. After the royal family's discord, the poll surveys and anti-monarchy protests are only clouding King Charles's coronation which is to take place at Westminster Abbey on 6th of May. Let's try and get in. A Ground Zero report and for that I'm joined in by CNN News 18's Sanjay Suri who joins me live from London. Thank you Sanjay for joining in. Uh, of course the most obvious question is the upcoming coronation expected to be one of the most low-key affairs so far as far as previous coronation ceremonies are concerned. Well, you know, there are not a lot of previous ceremonies that one can compare. There's only 1953 and Queen Elizabeth II reigned a good long 70 years. Mm. People were born and died and had a reasonable lifespan without ever witnessing a coronation in their lifetime. And a lot of people only witnessed that one when they were uh, very young. So this now uh, certainly is a very different a matter. Queen Elizabeth was uh, 25 when she was um, uh, took, uh, became the uh, queen and 26 when the coronation came. Prince Charles is 74. These are different times. These are times when Britain is in a crisis. No doubt there was an economic crisis and fallout of the war back in 53 as well. But now when the cost of living has become so high, when people are struggling to put food on the table and there is uh, the, the nation has been hit by strikes in just about every department, everybody's on strike at one time or other to demand wages, to demand some more money to deal with the very, very heavy costs of living. In the middle of that, this pomp and show seems rather out of place. It seems almost like an affront to people. It will be quite a spectacle, of course, as far as the detail and the visual presentation goes. The palace does this kind of thing very well. But clearly, the mood is now shifting. The mood is shifting away from celebration of this kind of uh, royal lifestyle and the coronation to one of uh, displeasure and uh, disquiet. People are asking whether all this uh, ceremony and all this splendor is the right thing to present to the country at a time when the country is in crisis and people facing difficulties day to day. Right, and it's interesting that you mention uh, the cost of living crisis, which is why I want to know, is the compromise only coming from the public or is there any indication that uh, there will be any compromise with the pomp and show as far as the ceremony is concerned? No, there will be no um, uh, diluting of the ceremony. That is a very well-established, uh, well-set routine. And this has been rehearsed for a long time. Uh, the celebration for a coronation and the kind of a military turnout and the parade and the uh, trappings of this, uh, oddly, are not very different from those for a funeral. We have the guards, the Queen's guards, the Royal Guards. We have the uh, golden carriage this time uh, that will carry uh, the king and there will be a procession to Westminster Abbey, from Westminster Abbey. There will be people lining the streets. So all this detail uh, will not change now. Uh, Nobody is going to dilute this because people think that it's inappropriate at this time. You either have the whole thing or nothing and we are going to have that full ceremony. Absolutely. It's just not going to do perhaps for King Charles what was anticipated, build him up as this great uh, awe-inspiring monarch and people will bow to him and celebrate. It's not turning out to be that kind of awe-inspiring event. It's turning out, on the contrary, for many people to be a slightly irritating event. 
<laughs> irritating event and that makes me want to ask you, is this also one coronation that's turning out to be extremely controversial, not just in terms of the economics of it, but also uh, the politics and the gossip that's surrounding it, thanks to Prince Harry? Well, you know, these are just a few days to go. Now, we have a week to go for the, uh, for the, for the coronation. And in public, in court, we have testimony from Prince Harry. And there are two aspects to this. Prince Harry has said in his presentation to court, in his witness statement, that he was blocked from taking action that he believed he ought to have taken, that it was his right to take, mm. not just by the brother, not just by William, not just by some underhand behind the scenes deal, but by his father. And he says this in so many words that he was stopped by his father from proceeding. At the same time, he says he was undone by a secret deal between William and the NGN, which is the news group newspapers of uh, Rupert Murdoch. Whatever the facts of this, and those facts are disputed in court. The fact is, as far as family relations go, this is what Harry believes. This is what he has said publicly about his father, about his brother. And he'll be sitting there in Westminster Abbey with them, congratulating dad on the coronation uh, with the brother not far from him. And we all know what's going on behind the scene. Absolutely. It is the bitter irony of the royal family. But having said that, before I let you go, Sanjay, uh, we were also referring to what the polls have been indicating in terms of the king's popularity. Why have the king's ratings dipped? Well, this is, uh, I have to say, uh, what the polls are reporting is something that uh, we have been seeing all the time. I remember uh, uh, watching uh, King Charles coming out of the Buckingham Palace in his Rolls Royce, being driven out. He raised his hand to wave to the crowd. No one was waving at him. We also know that uh, the king has met opposition and protests at places he has gone. This never happened with Queen Elizabeth needless to say there is a question he's about his personal popularity is not very popular and such popularity as he had is beginning to dip very steadily as these polls are showing it's within a very short time of his reign it's not even the coronation yet and his popularity has begun to slide down and this coronation rather than building him up is going to dent his popularity even further people are asking uh, what are we all spending a lot of money for? What are we paying a lot of money for? And we don't even know where it is going. Right. The accounts are so opaque. The palace never discloses uh, how much is spent on what. What are we doing this for just to watch this, some sort of a royal tamasha? Right. And uh, at a time when we are suffering, people are beginning to ask these questions and King Charles is not turning out to be a particularly popular king at all. And I'm sure those questions are only going to get fiercer after the coronation ceremony takes place. We'll perhaps have a clearer picture in terms of the expenditure involved. But many thanks to you, Sanjay, for sharing in the latest and putting the entire coronation ceremony into perspective for us.